So today I'm going to be showing you how to break down Seabass. So let's begin. So that's right, we are delving into another fish filleting video. And the beautiful fish we're going to be working with today is sea bass. And sea bass has a really nice delicate flavor and is best served with sauces that are both bright and acidic. So some examples of sauces to serve sea bass with are salsa verde, brown butter and lemon, and romesco. So the technique I'm using today to fillet this fish is called sangmai oroshi. And if you're not sure what that is, then watch my white bass video to get a better idea. And I pretty much never deviate from this method as I find it the most effective way to fillet fish. So try to pay close attention in this video as I'm going to be explaining the what, the how, and the why when it comes to filleting sea bass. And without further ado, Let's begin. All right, so here is our beautiful sea bass. And once again, we want to check that the skin is tight to the flesh and not slimy. We also want the eyes to be bulging and not cloudy. And lastly, we want the gills to be nice and dark pink or red and not discolored. Now from tail to head, I'm going to remove some of the scales that the fishmonger might have left on. Now after I've done that, I can begin removing the head. So we want to place our knife behind the pectoral fin. And there's also going to be the two pelvic fins near the belly. So we're going to make one slice. And then turn our fish around and make the second slice. And with the heel of our knife, we're going to cut right through that neck bone in order to remove the head. Next, we're going to gut the fish and we want to look for this small hole called a urinary pore. Now with the tip of my knife, I'm going to start at that urinary pore and slice right through the center of the belly. Next, I'll proceed by removing any offal from the fish. And here there's going to be a membrane which covers the bloodline and I'm going to slice right through that in order to expose that bloodline. And I'll just throw this awful out as I'm not going to be using it. And to clean the bloodline we're going to use these bamboo skewers tied in elastic bands. And the tip of these skewers is what we're going to use to scrape out the bloodline. So over a cold bowl of water, you just want to begin scraping out that bloodline. Now as you can see, our bloodline is nice and cleaned. Now we're going to clean our board. Now next, we're going to start drying our fish. And the reason we do this is because it allows our knife to make cleaner cuts. And make sure to also dry the inside of the fish. 
So now we can start filleting and we're going to start with the right side fillet. And we're going to make our first incision along the belly. Now important tip is to keep your index finger at the spine of your knife for maximum control. Next I'll use the palm of my hand to tilt the fish so I can get some leverage while slicing the belly. And when making your cuts you want to keep your knife parallel to the bone as much as possible. Now when I turn the fish around to slice along the spine, I want to keep the tail bent downwards and not upwards in order to move along the spine a lot more effectively. Now with the tail section, I want to make sure there's a gap in between because next we're going to slice through the backbone. And the way we do this is we place our knife in between that gap and then we can hold the tail and slice right through that backbone. And here is our right side fillet. Next we're going to turn the fish around and as you can see there's some fish oil on my knife so I'm going to wipe that clean before I begin to make my next cuts. And with the second fillet I'm going to begin with the spine and not the belly. And again using the palm of my hand I'm going to get a bit of leverage here. Next, I'll turn the fish around and once again make an incision through that belly. And of course, another important tip is to keep that belly bent upwards so that you can slice more effectively. And again, once that gap is created in the tail section, I can place my knife in between and slice right through that backbone. And there is our beautiful second fillet. And here is the center bone. Next, I'm going to remove the rib bones and with my knife pointed upwards, I'm going to detach them from the flesh first before I begin to place my knife underneath those rib bones and remove them like so. And here is our rib bones and we can use this for fish stock. And I'll do the same thing with the other fillet. So 
So in this process, what's really important is to make sure you keep that belly on there because the belly, in my opinion, is the most flavorful part. Now lastly, we can remove the pin bones. Now while removing the pin bones, keep your index finger and your thumb on the flesh as you're removing the bones in order to keep the flesh from tearing off. And luckily, there will be no pin bones in the tail section. It's only gonna be where that backbone was. Next, I'm going to show you how to slice these into fillets and the way we do it in restaurants. Now, as you can see, the grain of the fish is on a diagonal, so we want to slice in the same direction. And that's our first portion. And our second portion. Now I'll do the same thing with the second fillet and you can make these portions as big or as small as you'd like. And there is our fillet nicely portioned. All right, so that is it. I really hope this video helped when it comes to the ins and outs of filleting sea bass. Also, please give fish filleting a try. Even if you mess up, I promise you, you're way ahead of the person who never actually tried. Finally, if you enjoy this sort of content, then definitely consider subscribing and give this video a like for the YouTube algorithm. All right, I'm out of here for today, but until we meet again, Keep on cooking.